Today I'm going to share with you my DJI Osmo Action 4 low light settings and workflow. Starting with the settings, I always shoot in 4K resolution and either at 25 or 50p. Then I use Rocksteady stabilization or sometimes I completely disable it. And I'll explain why a bit later in the video. As for the field of view, I always shoot in standard unless I disable Rocksteady, in which case I switch to wide to record Jaro data. In the image adjustment, menu I set the sharpness to minus two because I prefer to add sharpness myself in post and I set the noise reduction to minus one for a clean looking image at minus two there's a bit more noise in the shadows and at zero or one it looks too artificial I think that minus one is the sweet spot for noise reduction on the action four moving on I set the color to D log M for maximum flexibility in post production and I adjust the white balance depending Depending on the scene. In low light, it's typically somewhere between 3000 and 4500 Kelvin. As for exposure, first of all, I use this included lens hood filter rather than the original waterproof lens filter because the lens hood filter allows slightly more light to reach the sensor. I think it increases the exposure by about 50, 60 ISO, which may not seem like much, but I find it worthwhile when shooting in low light conditions. Then I adjust the shutter speed. I try to keep it as low as possible, somewhere between one over 50 to one over 200, depending on whether I want to record Jaro data or not. If I do, I set it to one over 50 because Rockstar stabilization struggles at that shutter speed, producing a lot of artifacts and I find that stabilizing action 4 clips in post-production with something like Jaro Flow usually yields better stabilization results. However, if I don't want to record Jaro data and just want to use Rocksteady, I'll set the shutter speed to somewhere between 1 over 100 to 1 over 200 because it provides better stabilization results with fewer artifacts. Afterward, I adjust my exposure with ISO, typically not going higher than ISO ISO 3200 until the exposure meter on the screen reads around minus 1 to minus 0.3. I also use the rear display on the camera to judge exposure. If it looks too dark, it means it's actually too dark and vice versa. So I'm now outside and I want to give you a real world example on how I do everything I explained to you in this video in a matter of a couple of seconds. The first thing I'm going to do is adjust the white balance and I think in this case I'm gonna go for 2500 Kelvin because the light here is very yellow and if it's a bit off I can always fix it in post-production. All right and now I have to decide on whether I'm going to record Jaro data or use the built-in Rocksteady stabilization. I think in this case I'm going to use the Rocksteady stabilization because there's plenty of light in here and also I kind of feel lazy to stabilize my clips in post-production. So first of all, I'm going to enable Rocksteady. Then I'm gonna go inside the exposure settings and I'm going to up my shutter speed to one over 100 because I'm not planning to do anything crazy here with the camera movement. If I was running or something like that in here, I would bump up my shutter speed to one over 200 to get better stabilization performance, but I'm just going to do a simple camera movement of me going forward here and then I'm going to adjust the ISO until the EV icon in here says minus 0 0.3 minus 0 0.7 and I'm also going to look at the rear display to see if the exposure is right. So let's bring up the ISO and I think in this case I'll use ISO 3200. Now I'm just going to take my shot point the camera straight and go for it. Slight ninja walk to make it more stable. Let me show you another example, but this time I'm not going to record the camera screen because I don't have another camera with me, but I am going to say exactly what settings I'm using. 
and I'm gonna do walking shots in here just going straight basically so I'm still going to use Rocksteady stabilization because again I have plenty of light in here and I don't feel like using jar of flow in post-production I want to save as much time as possible I'm going to change the white balance to about 3500 Kelvin and now I'm going to play around with the exposure the shutter speed is set to 1 over 100 because I want to get the most amount of exposure and the best stabilization performance and I'm going to dial down the ISO until the EV compensation is roughly at minus 0.3 minus 0.7 I'm at ISO 800 now and it says minus 0.3 so I know the exposure is correct three two one go moving as stable as possible to reduce shake I kind of like this building in here so let's see how long it takes me to get a shot without actually explaining to you what I am doing adjusting the white balance now the exposure set three two one go let's get another one three two one go Now, before I move on to color grading, I want to mention something very important if you're using your action for a lot in low light. I think it makes the most sense to buy a gimbal because this will give you the absolute best stabilization performance in low light conditions. Or you can disable the Rocksteady stabilization completely and just record the Jaro data and then stabilize everything manually in post production with Jaro flow. I think this gives slightly better results than Rocksteady stabilization, but it requires a bit more work in post-production. You have to stabilize the clips, and if you have a lot of them, it's gonna take a lot of time and effort. Or you can save up some money and buy the new DJI Pocket 3, which is basically an action camera or a smartphone camera and a gimbal together. So you won't have any issues with this camera in low light especially that it has a one inch sensor i'm actually going to get this camera pretty soon it's not available yet here in thailand so stay tuned for videos the best option is to use a gimbal with action for and low light second best option is to use jaro flow with recording jaro data on the action 4 and the other best option is to buy another camera the dji Pocket 3. All right, I am now in Final Cut Pro and let me show you how I color grade my action for low light shots. First of all, I'm going to add some saturation. Let's go to about here, 70%. Next, I'm going to adjust the contrast with color curves. I'm basically creating a nice S curve in here. Next thing I'm going to do is adjust the white balance. I can definitely see a lot of yellow in here or orange it is. I'm going to remove that. And I think there's also a bit of green here in the shadows. And I think I am done with this as well. Next, I'm going to add HSL curves and I'm going to further balance out the colors in here. First of all, I'm going to play around with the yellows and greens. And I'm going to add some saturation to these colors. I'm also going to change the hue of the orange colors and I'm going to desaturate the blue colors a bit and purple and add some teal to the blue colors and also I'm going to reduce the luminance of the orange colors but only by a little bit because this can easily break the image let me see if I can also add some saturation here and reduce it in the highlights to make it a bit more balanced. All right, I think I'm done with the color correction. This is the before and after, and I'm going to create a look. Let's add color wheels. I'm going to push the shadows towards blue. 
the mid-tones towards magenta red and the highlights towards steel blue as well. I'm not pushing everything too much because I don't want to break this image apart. It was shot at about ISO 1600, I think. So I want to keep everything as minimal as possible. All right, next I'm going to add color curves and I'm going to balance out everything. I think there's a bit of blue in the shadows here. Also, I want to remove the orange in the highlights a bit. I'm going to add another HSL curve and I'm going to desaturate the shadows just to make the image look a bit more balanced and also desaturate the highlights. Finally, I'm going to add sharpness because I reduced it in camera about 1.3. So let's see what I've done to this shot. First of all, I added some saturation, then I adjusted the contrast, then I adjusted the white balance and also the colors with HSL curves. Then I created the look with color wheels. Then I balanced the look with color curves. Then I reduced the saturation in the shadows and highlights with HSL curves. And finally, I added some sharpness because I reduced it in camera. I think I can actually reduce the blues a bit more here. Just like so. This is the before and after. So this is basically how I shoot my low light footage with the Action 4. I expose everything manually. I mainly use Rocksteady stabilization because I'm pretty lazy to stabilize my clips with something like Jaroflow, and then I color grade everything in Final Cut Pro without using any plugins. But I think if you're using your Action 4 a lot in low light, it's best to buy a gimbal and just leave the exposure settings at automatic to not have to worry about anything. Anyhow, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. And I guess I'll see you again soon. Peace.